The GOP Oversight Committee says they have discovered 50 countries where the Biden family sought business. They tweeted out this map yesterday saying, quote, the Biden family sold access to enrich themselves often to the detriment of U.S. interests. Is POTUS compromised? Americans need transparency and accountability. Last week in a press conference, House Republicans announced an investigation into the Biden family. Here's how the administration responded earlier this week. Can you address whether the president was involved in any of his son, uh, Hunter, or his brother's uh, foreign business deals? So look, I, you know, um, there's there's some a little bit of uh, interesting, uh, you know, kind of on-brand uh, thinking here because, um, you know, congressional Republicans uh, ran uh, saying that they were going to fight inflation. Uh, they said they were going to make that a priority. They were very clear about that these past uh, several months. and. Instead, what they're doing is they're focusing, uh, you know, they're focusing, they're making their type priority. They get the majority, and their type priority is actually not focusing on the American families, but focusing on the president's family. That was a pretty lame attempt at some spin there. I mean, look, they can do multiple things. I, you know, fair point that maybe Republicans were not focused enough on providing answers to what they're going to do about inflation. And that's why I think we've, you know, we've discussed this. I think we both feel that way, that they didn't perform as well as expected in the election. But like, you know, they, they, they're, the government, the, the party can do multiple things. They can investigate this. And that was a total non-answer to her question. And right. in fact, they ran, they did run on ha having these investigations. They promised Republican voters that they would look into this. So it was just a totally non-responsive answer to that question. Yeah. Kareem, it is perfectly possible to say no. There's no evidence that Joe that Joe Biden had any involvement with his son's dealings. Moreover, it does a disservice to the American people that Republicans aren't actually addressing some of these pressing economic needs they said they cared about. Like that's you're able to say that. But the the weird evasion before actually declaratively answering the question, you know, if, if Republicans pursue these investigations of the Biden family, you know, the onus is on them to find evidence mm -hmm. of the thing. And you can, incur, you know, it's their right to do so, just like it was the right of Democrats to investigate Donald Trump. But I, I, I do agree with Karine Jean-Pierre to the extent that it is not especially helpful to the American people who are getting way more attention uh, paid uh, to these kind of kangaroo court investigations of individual bad actors, it, it, potentially. Um, but not any affirmative plan set up by Republicans and very little from Democrats with respect to actually how to deal with the cost of living increases and economic plight that so many Americans are dealing with. Yeah, yeah, I think it's I think that's true. But I think they are going to look into this. They said they would. The fact that uh, you know, the, how the FBI has handled this issue, you know, that's something I really want um, answers to, you know, more looking at. Why, uh, why, why the investigation was, you know, delayed toward af after the election? Does that hold up? Was that proper? Why national security officials seemed so uh, convinced that the laptop was disinformation? All of that stuff. I, I think there are legitimate procedural questions, even apart from the the important, que the very important question about, you know, whether. Biden uh, was was leveraged by by his son's connections. Again, there has not been any evidence of that yet. Maybe there won't be. It would have been totally expected for Karine Jean-Pierre to say exactly what you just recommended. There is, as of yet, no, there is no evidence. I mean, she should say there's never going to be any evidence, right? She's the spokesperson for the administration. Uh, it's not like, you know, she's going to be get a misinformation label if or like that will be the least right. of her problems if They're later on it her. turns out, oh, actually, <laughs> right. there is evidence he was uh, he was compromised in some way. <laughs> Nobody's going to there, there will be bigger problems than oops, Kareen said something that was not totally <laughs> accurate. Right. So right. the press, idea that she has to be very careful lies. there is odd. Press Secretary lies, news at 10 is not exactly a headline anybody, <laughs> anybody expects to see. But look, let me, let me ask you this. I mean, as you alluded to, we have been talking about whether or not Republicans made a misstep in focusing on some of these culture wars. I mean, you can describe uh, some aspects of the Hunter Biden investigation as substantive and some other as kind of capitalizing on a cultural distaste for Democrats, et cetera. You know, the emphasis on, you know, the trans kids and, and these kinds of things didn't seem to have paid off. Do you expect there to be a doubling down on, on these kinds of issues to the detriment, to the exclusion of talking about all of the economic priorities that Americans are so clear uh, they want addressed? 
Yeah, look, I mean, the issue here is that a, a lot of very conservative, very Trump-supporting, very right-wing people um, do want answers to these questions, do you know, feel strongly that uh, the Hunter Biden issue is, is improper and it's important to investigate it, feel strongly about trans issues, the cultural issues, you know, whatever you want to describe them. And there are a lot of those people and, and they, they want, and, and uh, Republican kind of politicians or media organizations or pundits, et cetera, um, you know, keep talking about those things because they, if there's no audience for it, yeah, they would stop. But there is a big audience for it. The issue is it's not, it's not enough. It, these are not important issues for the, for the group of people that need to be persuaded to support Republicans who are more in the middle, who might be down for Republicans if they're not talking about those things constantly, if they're concentrated on the economy, if they seem more normal. You know, I would note once again that the Republicans that I would describe as normal-ish or not you know, so obsessed with these issues or, or not offering the most kind of right-wing versions of these issues did actually do very well and they had the best night of all in the elections. Your Brian Kemp's, your, um, your, your people of that nature. So Republicans, it, like it, I think the path is clear, but there will, it's, there will be incentive to talk about culture issues. And look, and I think talking about culture issues is important. And I, I think even, even moderates, even, even centrists and some Democrats are, are, I think, concerned or have questions about how much input, for instance, parents get in what's taught in schools or you know, what the schools are doing in general. I don't think all of these cultural issues are necessarily just right-wing issues, and it's always a mistake but, but to talk Robbie, about them. I, I didn't characterize them as right-wing issues. I characterize them as issues that didn't get people to the polls, especially when something yeah. that's as substantive as abortion rights is hanging over them. So we use the word audience. You know, what, what, you know there's an audience for this. I, I don't think that you meant it this way, but I think that that word suggests a kind of cable news audience and yeah. it suggests the kind of media focus that I think the Republicans got caught up in, and they forgot that real people aren't an audience. They're constituency is a constituency of voters who have real needs. And we'll see, you know, we'll see how this this kind of focus, if they maintain this particular uh, focus instead of pivoting to some more economic issues and offering real solutions for those economic issues instead of just blaming Democrats, um, we'll see how that pans out. In I mean, it would, it would not be str right. It would not be strange if that happens to uh, right wing media is to, you know, pandering to a shrinking audience of people who are obsessed with a certain kind of issue. I mean, that's something that I, we argue has happened to the mainstream media all the time. <laughs> just, you know, media institutions can become captured in that way and can kind of kind of miss the broader picture. So if something mm -hmm. like that is what happened and why this election didn't turn out the way they expected, that would not actually be all that surprising. Yeah, for sure. Mm. Well, we will have more rising for you right after this.